Hello, I want to show some new ionospheric heater activity out in the Pacific that may well be signaling a new approach by the U.S. Navy in that uh, they are shying away from heating the ionosphere directly and moving towards just smoking the, uh, you know, heating the cloud tops because of the high ultraviolet that's been uh, killing the plankton in the ocean. So I'm not trying to make an excuse for them, but what I'm seeing on these maps, on the satellite images, indicates <clears throat> a lot of long straight lines that are anomalous. And in fact, here's one that's an absolute stunner. If any meteorologists watch this, please, um, maybe you could have a look at this time slot and try and tell me what the heck these lines are. Uh, I did look at this is a, some saved video from a few days ago. This is October 17, and uh, today's the 20th. So I was actually looking at. You can see here at here at 18,000 feet we have a northwest wind, and at 34,000 feet, sure as hell, it's not that. So and then at uh, 60,000 feet, there's pretty much not a whole lot of wind at all, and then this is the ozone layer at 26 kilometers. So I will go back to the the lines themselves. So this is um, visible light mode and uh, 2300. So this is uh, late afternoon and then there's sunset and here's sunrise and right here there's a harp downburst and then later we see these long straight lines right here. Uh, unfortunately I get this bar on my video player. Now this is in, um, you can see these lines right here. This is in 2.2 um, infrared mode, so you have better contrast. You can sure see these lines, and this is a very short um, cycle, but there was a harp downburst here, and these lines are actually moving slightly backwards. So as these roll clouds, and you can see them steamrolling over these low clouds here. So that means they are actually at that cloud level. And from the, the movement, we can use the, uh, now here's the best view right here. Let me stop it when it gets to a, thing is if you zoom, zoom too far, the video card starts averaging all these little pixels and then you lose your contrast and you can't see it. So this kind of event is right at the limit of resolution of the video card. And uh, I want to mention another thing, that these long straight parallel lines that we've just seen on this satellite are exactly what I saw the Saturday morning of the Hawaiian false missile alert, if you recall back in January 2018 ballistic missile alert. I mean, the thing actually sent out on their emergency alert system, ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii, seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. So they actually thought a North Korean nuclear missile was about to hit uh, Hawaii, which it didn't, but I'm the only one that noticed these long, I mean, it was like 500 miles long, four straight bars in, in the infrared mode, and uh, this went out around the world, and nobody looked at the satellite map but me and saw these long lines. And then I did make a video, and I let it sit on my hard drive for a couple weeks, and then it was gone. So I kind of freaked out that... Uh, and these are the guys that were assigned to figure out what the hell the missile alert was for. And they never could figure it out, but they never fired the guy that pressed the button because he saw these long straight lines basically right parallel. It was south of Hawaii and it was slightly to the northeast. <clears throat> Looked like a missile trail. But there was like four or five of these all parallel. So uh, I'm just telling you what I saw. But on that Saturday morning, there wasn't all this other cloud junk in the area. It was pretty much a wide open uh, sky, 
and then you had these super long straight lines show up uh, at the very same time of this missile alert. So um, my interpretation is, of course, this is Isla Guadalupe here with Baja California there, and they are doing a uh, ionospheric oper heating operation right here to suppress a low pressure. This low pressure here, or future low pressure, is going to go south over some super warm water and form a hurricane. So for what this right here, you could see the the, ex the initial expansion, and then it's right here, boom, that's it, right there. And then these lines are a consequence, and then they also draw it up this way. So it's a linear uh, ionospheric heater operation. So I was going to say that. U.S. Navy is, is shying away from this, but they're still doing it, and this is the one case. So now I'm going to show you uh, some nighttime parallel lines over the Pacific. And this is just cloud top heating. But this is done to maintain <coughs> the ridiculously resilient ridge of high pressure over the Pacific right here, which is now causing the blob of hot water to reoccur because there's not normal uh, weather patterns to mix this hot water on down. <coughs> and also this, by having high pressure here, you have constant clockwise movement and hot, hot air driven up into the Arctic. So this is nighttime now, infrared mode, long wave, 10.3. And what we notice is right about here. These are long straight lines, and actually there's two parallel long straight lines here. And there's a marker for you. There's another marker for you. There is no reason to have long straight lines forming in the middle of the night. And it actually locates where these ships are. And subsequent lines uh, originate from that same kind of uh, starting point. So this is just a cycle. I'm trying to find exactly where this, the first line that happens right here, we can see two. So in other words, the ship is right about in this area here. And let's put a line down there and then the parallel. So the cloud mass is moving to the northeast. And that means they burn the first one, this one, a few minutes later, they burn the second one. And as it moves to the northeast, they actually get deeper and wider. And, and we're not supposed to see any of this, for heaven's sakes. In fact, uh, GOES is starting to put these lines on here. And now they're using that as an excuse to delete whole hours at a time on the nighttime infrared. So again, here's another one of these straight lines with a, approximately the same um, origin point. And why do you have straight lines forming in the middle of the night? There is absolutely no reason other than these. The, there's, there's no D, D region of the ionosphere for them to heat, and they, um, they want to maintain the ridiculously rid, resilient ridge. And also, you know, this could really have brought a bunch of rain to southern and central California. And by heating it like this, they suppressed all the rain. Um, I could show you uh, some other evidence. But unfortunately, I uh, didn't save those or something. But uh, during the time of this nighttime uh, action with the Navy ships, there was, uh, you could look at the uh, nationwide mosaic composite radar and there was a spurious radar source coming from here and also seen by San Francisco. So these two uh, radar vectors identified something right in this area as having a, a spurious uh, radar source or an in-band signal detected and it just shows up as a little uh, red and green little uh, sort of a 
uh, dot dash line. You can see that so many times whenever there's a um, one of these military uh, radar things operating real close to the next rad band. So this is just an, another close-up. So let's look at <clears throat> Tropical Storm Nestor, which just hit the uh, Florida Panhandle Saturday night, October uh, 18. And it was uh, reported to be a big rain event. Uh, it caused about five feet of uh, uh, storm surge up here near Tallahassee. So. What I think happened, and this shows more of these long straight lines, is that they had a surface low here, and they wanted to make sure this, the upper low didn't match up with it, so they used ionospheric heater in this area here to, again, uh, well, just watch. So let's... Um, Let that run again. Right here, off the toe of Louisiana, here's a bunch of vertical lines that show up. And it causes, it kills this low pressure in this area. That way you have the just clear air blowing on top of the surface low. Here are the, the lines that I'm pointing out. And, okay, so we've got a, a, a southwest wind, so these lines are normal. Okay, but these vertical lines that form a grid are not normal. And uh, I was going to go ahead and uh, look for any kind of naval base here at the, the toe of Louisiana, but um, I, I was starting to get freaked out that maybe these uh, raw video clips that I've saved will get deleted, and then I won't be able to document any of this, so that's why I'm rushing this upload here. Now this is clearly a bunch of vertical lines, evenly spaced, and it's blowing with the uh, winds aloft. We got a pretty strong jet stream causing the shearing of this low pressure, and that's why it didn't turn into a real ugly hurricane. So maybe I can get this to stop, and we'll... Okay, so it's starting right here. So I would expect there's an, a naval base in this area or a bunch of Navy ships. And this is uh, 18 UTC, so you've got to subtract. So this is mid-afternoon, actually. So see, instead of heating the ionosphere, they're burning the cloud tops. This is what I'm thinking. Okay, now we get to see it in visible light. So again, here's your surface low, and they're they're trying to rush, keep, keep such a... Um, well, knock down this upper low before it can unite and build up even stronger. Real real sloppy way to describe that. And we already missed it. So it'll cycle again. But I'm just uploading these clips because I was f starting to freak out that they're going to vanish. And I've spent many days looking at these things. And, and many days trying to figure out what the heck they are. So I hope you forgive the sloppy nature of this video, but I just want to make sure that they go on the record. And I was listening to Dane's talk about ionospheric heaters and Dorian, and it's like, oh, hats off to you, Dane. That's that's some brave stuff to talk about this. See, here's in visible light. We are seeing real vertical. Uh, it's a grid. It's actually a small grid. So instead of heating the ionosphere up here and causing a circular downburst, they are cooking the cloud tops with millions of watts of power to actually cut these furrows in the clouds. I, I don't know what else to, that's going to explain it. There is, there is an expansion right here, so... Right here, you can see there's an expanding bubble. We're going backwards. Now we go forwards. Right there, there's an expanding bubble. Now that looks like ionospheric heater activity. And then they finish it off by, by burning the cloud tops in a linear fashion. 
So it could be that the U.S. Navy has realized, wow, we're actually killing the oceans every time we uh, <clears throat> use these ionospheric heaters, which would be a real positive step in the right direction, if you ask me. The next thing would be for them to come out publicly and say, oh, by the way, we do have a hurricane suppression system to protect the Gulf Coast cities, and we will use it as sparingly as possible, and only for the good of the American people. That would be wonderful if they would come out and say that. And I happen to know for a fact uh, Air Force is still using the ionospheric heaters as a downburst weapon. So... Uh, that's my update. After many days of long hours of work, uh, just to make sure this video doesn't get deleted. Thanks.